Zen 5 is finally here. AMD has finally released its single CCD 9600X and 9700X, promising massive improvements compared to its last gen Zen 4. But does it really beat its last gen Zen 4 X3D CPUs? Zen 5 is promising a 16% higher IPC improvement compared to last gen Zen 4 on its brand new four nanometer process. What this means is that it's gonna be more power efficient, better clocks, and as well, just perform better overall compared to its last gen. Currently, as of right now filming, the 9600X and the 9700X are the only CPUs available. Those are the single CCD ones. The 9900X and the 9950X will be releasing on August 15th. And I will be picking up a 9950X, so make sure that you are subscribed if you're not already for my content. I decided to only pick up the 9700X for this review just because I really am only interested in those eight core CCDs. It's the same reason why I will only be picking up a 9950X and not the 9900X or the 9600X. Six core CCDs, in my opinion, are not very good. If you need the cores on a 9900X and you can't afford the 16 core, maybe it makes sense, but if you're purely gaming, the eight core CCD will perform much better. This is why including most likely in this gen, but in previous gens as well, the seven series, the eight core CPU has always performed better in games than the 12 core. It's because while yes, it does have more cores, as soon as you leave that core, that CCD, you're gonna start having some latency issues and some performance issues. And once you use more than six cores on those CPUs, your performance starts to diminish. So that's why I highly do recommend only thinking about the 9900X and the 9950X the other two, in my opinion, just don't really exist. How does this CPU perform? And really, is it an upgrade for people? So we decided to test it against AMD's Gaming Crown, the CPU that they actually do believe is faster. That's right, AMD has already come out and said that before even the launch of the 9700X, the 7800X 3D was still the gaming king. And let's see if they really were truthful about that. We are testing this against my maxed out 7800X 3D. All of these benchmarks will be fully overclocked. So with my 7800X 3D, we were running 6200 megahertz CL30 with 2133 on the FCLK. PBO was set to, if you're interested in kind of a more in-depth guide, I do have a setup guide for Zen 4 and Zen 5 that you can check out on my channel. And pairing this with the Micro Center bundle, which is the B650 Gaming AX V2, and then as well as 32 gigabytes of, I actually replaced the memory with 8i, so 6400 megahertz XMP, but obviously we can't run that. AMD not only has to beat the 7800X 3D, but it has to beat it on price. I got that CPU for after taxes and shipping $400. I got this bundle for $500. So for $100 more, you get a motherboard and RAM already. Well, you still have to buy that with the 9700X, which can be pretty expensive depending on what you pick. But going next to the 9700X, I was actually able to do 6200 megahertz CL30 as well on the RAM. So none of that changed. The memory controller wasn't any better. But the FCOK, I was actually get able to do 2167, which is a slight improvement and will be better in games. Everything was 100% stability tested as well. I did not use Precision Boost Overdrive. I know that there is this brand new curve shaper. There is these curve optimizer things. But with this CPU, I was only able to get an 88 watt power limit. That meant that in any all core workload, it was down clocking significantly. For example, if I would run something like Prime 95 or Y Cruncher, it was in the low four gigahertz. The CPU has a 5.5 gigahertz max boost clock. What I did instead was I actually did an all core overclock. This is something very similar to what I used to do on like a 5950X when that was the gaming king on AMD. So I was actually able to get 5.4 gigahertz all core, 100% stable, even in like an AVX 512 workload at only 1.2 volts V core. This is a very good chip. Why is an all core workload for something like this better than PBO? you're going to get consistent performance. So yes, your single core might not be the absolute best and it might not be as fast, but what you're gaining instead is you are gaining consistent performance. You don't have to worry about cores not boosting properly, as well as you don't have to worry about AMD and Windows properly getting that preferred cores that you have that might boost 50 to 100 megahertz higher. All of them perform the same, all cores are equal. And also then, PBO is really just a matter of cooling. If you have a high-end cooler, I'll leave an affiliate link down below to some that I recommend. I use the Thermalrite Frozen Knot 360. It's a really cheap cooler and it performs very well in my opinion. Um, I had no cooling issues on this thing, except for when the CPU becomes very inefficient. That's what you'll notice, especially when running like an AVX 512 workload. I posted a picture on my Twitter and 
a lot of people got mad because I was pulling 160 watts and it was hitting 90 C. AMD still refuses to actually fix its IHS. They want everyone to not have to buy new coolers. If they would lower the IHS or that Z height, it would be a significantly better cooler. That's why delitting and lapping is such an important thing on these CPUs. Also, just before anyone like starts asking questions and think I'm an Intel fanboy, I'm not. But why didn't you compare it against your 1400K KS or your 1300K? It's not because they're degraded. It's because I just don't think that for the price of a 1400K and a motherboard, it's very comparable. I will be comparing it though against the 9950X once I pick one up. So let's get into the benchmarks now. Starting off with Cinebench R23, this is just like what cores are faster. And obviously the 9700X has more IPC as well as a much higher core clock where the Cinebench on the 9700X is 24,000 versus 18,000 on the 7900X3D. This is no surprise at all. X3D's biggest crutch is the actual cache. So it makes sense that it also beats it in single core by about 300 points. So very impressive. Far Cry 6 is up next, and this is actually an AMD title. Literally, when you launch up the game, it shows the AMD Radeon like logo and stuff and gives you a little cutscene. Um, this was done at 1080p low. This is a great CPU bound bench, and it's on Xbox Game Pass. And the 7900X3D absolutely cooks it except in the minimum fps which is kind of thanks to that you know all core workload you don't have to worry about oh maybe the cpu isn't boosting so 700x3d though does look like the win and the min fps is about the same shadow of the tomb raider 720p lowest as everyone would obviously play this game and um the 700x3d wins this game fits in the cache so as long as the game will fit in the cache, it's going to win on the X3D CPUs. Cyberpunk 2077. This was done at 1080p Ultra. This is actually a very good CPU test as well. Um, this is with no ray tracing and no DLSS, so no upscaling. This is true 1080p. No, we're removing the GPU bound scenario. And the 700X3D gets about 15 FPS higher than it, going from 198 to 184. The max FPS is about 20 FPS higher as well. And the min FPS, once again, the 9700X does win in that min FPS. So what are we realizing here? AMD needs to just unlock their extra DCPUs. I'm a fine if it's against warranty, but let us have access to those core ratios so that don't have to, we don't have to worry about that boosting algorithm, which really does kind of hurt AMD's performance and just makes the CPU not feel as good. On to some competitive titles though. Rainbow Six Siege, the 700X 3D does win this by about 40 FPS in the average, about 40 more FPS as well in max FPS, 40 FPS basically in every scenario. This was in a Vulcan title, so this is why I use this. It's a Vulcan engine. Now on to Fortnite. So Fortnite is one of those games where it actually does fit in the cache, and this is very, very obvious. I mean, look at the lows on that 700X 3D. They're 100 FPS higher in the lows just because the game doesn't have to ping to the RAM or to the FCOK, which is causing issues, as well as everything else is higher because of that. Since I started benchmarking, there's actually been a tech power up article talking about SMT on versus off and how you are getting significantly more performance with SMT disabled. The main reason why I think this happens is just because that power limit, you're not going to hit it as much and the CPU can actually boost a little higher. More frequency equals more better. <laughs> no, it's just, you know, more frequency is going to help you. And so I decided to test this as well with 5.4 gigahertz as well. And we decided to test it in Counter-Strike 2, a very CPU bound title. This was done in the workshop map and you were getting significantly higher FPS with the 700X 3D. It is the winner, but your lows and your average FPS are higher with SMT disabled versus SMT on. The only caveat is that you're gonna lose eight of your threads. So you only have eight cores and eight threads. And finally, we're gonna be testing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and as you can see, the average FPS actually is losing on the 700X 3D with the lows being much higher, something I didn't expect an AMD CPU to be like killing another AMD CPU on the lows. Looking at the CPU FPS, which is the most important part because this is a GPU bound benchmark, even at 1080p, you are noticing that the 9700X does do pretty well. It is 100 FPS behind the 700X 3D, but when you disable SMT, it does get a little better except for in those lows probably because it doesn't have enough cores in my opinion if you're just playing some very heavy cpu bound maybe not very multi-threaded games such as counter-strike go ahead and disable smt but if you are multitasking on your pc you're editing you are doing design you're having a bunch of tabs open by intel 
<laughs> buy Intel. No, but keep SMT on if you are going to decide to pick up this CPU. But should you even think about or consider buying one? At its current price, absolutely not. I can see price cuts coming out very, very soon though. What I'd recommend though instead is wait until the end of this year, beginning of next year for the X3D Zen 5 CPUs to come out. Will they be much faster than the 7100 X3D? No, not really. I mean, comparing stock to stock, the 9700X is about 5% faster than the 7700X. So expect about 5% as well from the 9800X3D to the 7800X3D. But let me know with a comment down below what your thoughts are on this CPU. Do you think this is a win for AMD? Do you think it's an L? I think that this CPU is very good. I did like that it had an unlocked ratio. That's one thing I'm looking forward to AMD actually doing on Zen 5 X3D. It's rumored that they are. I'm hoping that they do. But if you guys did enjoy the video and want to support the channel, hit that like button down below, subscribe, join the Discord if you haven't already. I'm going to be doing a lot more OC stuff and as well doing behind the scenes stuff. I was sitting in VC in a voice chat while I was benchmarking, talking to people about the results, about my opinions. But I'll see you guys later. Peace.